Hello students, we have a uh, little bit started chapter 8 okay and this chapter 8 is about TIG controllers. Yeah. So chapter 8 and uh, PID controller. Okay. So although chapter 8 is uh, has a lot of topics there but uh, we will just have only one topic here okay uh, other topics are basically uh, mean for for example two degree of freedom uh, control and all kind of things are are not uh, basically part of the syllabus and second thing is uh, like we have already covered lot of things actually yeah and uh, vibration and control Two different subjects we try to combine in a single uh, course so already uh, content is uh, sufficient yeah so um, that way also uh, it is better that we can we actually focus on important uh, topics and uh, we uh, if you know those uh, automatically you can read uh, these things and you can learn more uh, basically so my plan is to actually the finish chapter eight today itself uh, since this is just one topic we will uh, uh, cover and uh, uh, the next video uh, I will have on uh, the solution of quiz two okay and then the uh, the last one uh, the, the 42nd one will be solution of quiz three yeah so after that you will have the in semester exam so uh, 42 it will be uh, covered yeah so this is uh, we are going to study about the PID controllers and uh, uh, PID controllers as you know already is uh, th this will be basically either you can write it as like this one so you have P so proportional so there is one proportional control here let us say call it one uh, then then uh, integral so it could be 1 over tau let's call it tau i s and then there will be a uh, d for derivative so derivative tau d and say s here right so you have a reference r s here okay and so like this uh, you have minus plus daily feedback okay and now for, from here it is going to go into three branches basically okay so this is proportional yeah and then they are going to meet here and meet and all will be plus basically also come in here like here uh, and here okay so okay so uh, here we go like this and then you have a plant okay so your, uh, your plant is here so this is a plant uh, will have its own transfer function so this is out this is output signals cs and there is a the back feedback right so this is the feedback uh, there could be some feedback here so feedback let, let's call hs this is the feedback yeah so this pid means uh, okay well, one thing i forgot there will be also a gain yeah so uh, there will be a gain here to multiply with this so we call it uh, I did not write KP here, so just one here, right? This is just one. So this we have KP, so that we multiply all of them by this KP. This is just a gain, yeah, proportional. Okay, and then uh, you have the the plant here, yeah. So you have plant here, and uh, this is how it completes. Okay, so this is uh, uh, either you can have this way or you can combine them, right? So you can also uh, this from here to here the whole thing from here to here can also you can combine and uh, combine like what you, you can have 
this is equivalent to just simply saying that this is kp multiplied by 1 plus so 1 over tau i s plus tau d s right so because you are writing 1 then plus this plus this all added multiplied by kp whole of it and this is what the the whole thing uh, basically represents right whole thing so either you can have this way or you you have just to write one block and still this is the PID controller but here this is this is proportional this one is uh, integral this is derivative yeah and then uh, multiplied by the proportional the this is again just again a con constant that multiplies to all the three blocks so we can have the equivalent will look like this so we have just one we can have like this and and this is kp 1 plus 1 over tau is plus tau ds and this is why this is pid controller okay the the deal here to find out what is the value of kp what is the value of ti what is the value of td okay for that you can do the analysis all the analysis stability analysis you can find out what is the response time for example settling time to uh, many other things uh, the parameters we have already studied yeah so based on that if you know the what is the transfer function of plant accordingly you can you can uh, draw very like a uh, root locus to see how stable it is what is zeta uh, what is omega and based on that the response it will have the response right so uh, you can do analysis or uh, you, uh, you can use Nyquist uh, stability criteria and you can plot the Nyquist diagram uh, plot and see uh, how stable it is. Uh, you can see what is the phase margin, gain margin, all kind of thing for, from the body diagram. Yeah, so uh, you can also do the Ralph's uh, stability criteria to find out whether uh, it's stable or not. So all those things you can apply if you, if you know the transfer function of plant. But the question is, what if we don't know the transfer function of plant and what to do? Yeah, so this is what we will study. So in order to do that, what is known as the Ziegler, Ziegler, Nichols, Nichols tuning, tuning of PID control. when when we don't know the transfer function of plant then we can apply it okay okay you can also apply uh, this when uh, you know the transfer function of plant that also you can do you can do that but uh, this will be uh, if you do analysis all those things that will be you will know what exactly you are doing basically right so in uh, Ziegler uh, Nichols tuning is just tells you from where to start. You still have to fine tuning. This gives you the initial point, initial value of KP, TI, and TD, where you uh, you can check the behavior. Based, uh, you can set these values and you can see how the behaves. And uh, when the behavior is not up to the mark, you can fine tune it. Right? So you can tune more and you can. Uh, uh, and uh, it will be in a loop, loop meaning that you try many times, you know, in iterations, and finally you will get the desired output, and then you stop there. Right? So, so uh, Ziegler and Nichols tuning uh, will basically this is just the starting point it gives you. Well, yeah, and of course this is based on experimental methods. Experimental method means you have the plant, you give some input, you have output. Based on that, you try to guess the value of KP, TI, and TD, and you give it here, and then uh, again, you give the input and see the what is the out output. Uh, based on that, you can change individually K, P, T, I, T, D until you get the desired value. So this is what it is all about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So start with uh, we are going to start the the Ziegler Ziegler 
Nichols, Nichols rules, rules for tuning, tuning PID controllers. Yeah, okay. So uh, there are two rules basically, there are two methods. So two methods, yeah, and uh, two methods. The first method is, uh, uh, there are two methods, meaning that you have a plant. So you have a plant. And uh, in the first method, first method, uh, you, you give uh, input as a step input. Yeah, so a step input. And then the, the, uh, this is the this is a plant, right? So it has got some input. So you get a step input and see the output, how the output is. So output will be could be something like this, right? It goes like this one, yeah. So based on that, you will decide the value of uh, like values of values of what? Remember K P T I and T D based on this, based on the value is some parameters there. Second method is different. Second method is like based on oscillation method. So this is, you can, you can say that this method is for first order uh, system, right? Lo looks like first order, uh, close to first order system. Then you have a step input, it goes like this one. Or you can say the over damped system or critically damped system like that one. Second method is uh, in which uh, this is going to have oscillation. So you give some disturbance, yeah, some uh, some disturbance, and then you are going to see like uh, how it is going to oscillate. Right? Oscillation you are looking at sustained oscillation, right? Sustained oscillation. Okay. So certain oscillation, you know that if there is a if the second order system that is something like a spring mass system, right? So you are tuning that, the, not this. You are tuning to ma the mass and spring system, yeah. And uh, then what what you are going to do? And then you are going to the give some disturbance. You know that even like a small impulse, it is going to make some oscillation there, right? Some so. And then based on this one, you are going to find out what is the period and all those things. And based on that, you are going to find out, right? Based on that, based on the response, response, find, find the KP uh, tau i tau t. Yeah, so there are two methods, that's right, there are two methods. Yeah, so uh, not necessarily this you can apply to uh, like all uh, systems, this not necessarily you are going to uh, apply to all of them. Yeah, so so whichever is suitable, you are going to apply that. Okay, so uh, let's say method one, we are going to see in details. Okay, so you have a plant here, and this is a plant. We are going to do some experiment. Okay, what experiment? So it gets uh, some input. There is some output. So input input you are going to uh, give is unit unit step yeah and you are going to see the what is the output and output could be a S curve like something like this one okay okay so uh, since you don't know the uh, what is the transfer function of the plant okay that's why the it could be of any shape yeah so uh, but we are assuming here the let us say if the the step input will have some s curve like this one okay so this is uh, if uh, if you have this the output curve like this one then uh, what do you do from here we are going to find it some parameters which parameter so let's see uh, this is how it goes so uh, like here and then uh, let's say it goes like this like this one okay so uh, what you see here is uh, there will be a point of inflection here yeah so this is let us say call it uh, this a point of point of inflection 
mean that a curvature changes, right? So here it is concave and here it becomes convex, right? So here, here it is slope is the, at, at this point, the slope changes, let us say, okay? Then you, what you are going to do, you are going to draw a line, okay? So you draw a straight line like this one. So here it is like this one. So uh, a straight line. So a straight line will be like this. Like this. Yeah. So this is a straight line. Yeah. So this is going to meet here, this axis. So this is with T. This is going T. Right. This is output of the plant. And uh, say here what it is, this is the final settled value, okay? So this value, let's call it K, yeah? So this is the K where this finally this is, this has the, the steady state value of that. Um, so uh, then we measure, what we measure? So we have two points, point one and point two here. Yeah, so we, we measure these points. So from here to here, let's call is this is t yeah we call it t and from here to here let's call it l okay so l if l is a distance from t equal to 0 to the where the this line tangent line intersects yeah intersects the time axis okay and and uh, t is a distance the time difference between uh, this point, let's call it uh, O, this uh, PQ, right, PQ. So this is between O and uh, point O is the origin, of t equal to zero basically. P is the, is the time uh, where the tangent to the point of inflection meets the time axis, the point P, and where the, that tangent meets the, the line, the, the long term value of the output which is k so um, the tangent uh, when that this meets this line that point is q so so time difference between this point p and q is is uh, time t this is capital t here okay so based on observation this one uh, you can guess that uh, uh, the transfer function of plant, let's call it Tp, transfer function of plant is given by k e to the power minus Sl, oh, okay, uh, divided by, divided by uh, Ts, Ts plus 1, okay. Please remember that there is no hard and fast rule here, this is what was uh, suggested uh, suggested by uh, Ziegler Nichols. Yeah, so this is approximate uh, transfer function of the plant guessed basically based on the the uh, the plant response to a unit step. Yeah. Okay. So based on that, we can find out now the value. Okay. So maybe the, uh, for example, if you have the PID control. Uh, so it may have just p meaning that is proportional control then what happens so we can have the different values so let's say just proportional control is here okay so so let's say type okay type and then uh, we have uh, proportional control and then pd control and then PID, uh, PI controller, sorry, PI controller, and then PID controller. Okay, so okay, and then here the value of what value of KP? What is the value of KP? Then uh, what value of uh, KI? And what is the value of KG? Yeah. sorry tau this will be tau i and tau d okay tau i and here it will be tau d okay 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 so uh, these are the parameters as you know and those parameters are like a pid is given by 
work uh, given by 1 plus uh, 1 over tau i s plus tau d s yeah so this is a transfer function of a prd controller and uh, this value uh, 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 multiplied by k p yeah proportional multiplied by k p so we are guessing k p t i and t d based on these values which values t and l basically yeah now if it's just a proportional controller then uh, you have a kp value the 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 first guess will be t over l you start from the t over l ti will be infinity in case of uh, proportional uh, controller then you have ti equal to infinity automatically this term goes away and td has to be zero so that this term is also not there so ti is infinity and td equal to zero yeah now pi just this and this so of course td will be zero in this case right so since this is a pi controller that the tau d has to be zero so that this term is out and then this and this value here you have 0 0.9 uh, times t over l okay and this is given by uh, l over 0 0.3 okay uh, uh, this one is given by 1.2 1.2 t over l this value 2 times l and this value 0 0.5 l okay so all these things are suggested by what is known as ziegler nichols rules yeah and this is based on the first method basically so this is what the table okay and uh, based on uh, this fine tuning you can actually uh, design a prd controller for for any system yeah so this is uh, uh, the starting point y you have this value yeah um, uh, uh, for the uh, PID controller and then you see how the system behaves whether it is re reaching the objective or not if not then you fine tune you change all this this little bit and see uh, and uh, see if it works okay so and keep on doing that yeah, in iterations and uh, you will find a uh, values where it works as per uh, the objectives so just to avoid confusion we can also write here this is the input is ut and uh, output is ct hence uh, this one for the plant is uh, actually this is given by cs over us yeah so this is the transfer function of course it was method one okay so this was method one was like this one now we are going to uh, talk about method two okay so method two we will talk about and all these things are will not be here in the second method we are again we are going to do some experiment but what kind of experiment so it will we are just going to use a kp here okay the proportional uh, controller okay so method two is this is method two just write method two here or second method so here we have uh, of course uh, we have to complete the whole uh, control the system so this is uh, rt is coming here and then ct is out this is ut and then you have uh, uh, minus plus and uh, the unit let us this is the unit okay so uh, here we have a unit of a feedback loop and we are going to first do some experiment okay and what kind of uh, experiment we are going to tune kp okay or we change the kp such that we, we are uh, we are going to get some oscillations okay so 
meaning that here you will get some city which will look like this. Okay, the sustained oscillation. Okay, what is the meaning of that? As I also mentioned earlier, what you are going to do is actually the system, maybe second order system, which could be something like this. We have K, C, and M, right? And by changing this KP, what you are going to do is somewhere you are going to remove C basically. And what you have is a, a spring and mass system only. Or you change this one such that zeta becomes equal to zero. That's what you are looking for. Yeah. So then if zeta becomes zero, then you know that there will be some oscillation, right? A little bit of disturbance and it is going to oscillate, keep on oscillating. Basically, you are, you are, uh, what you are going to do is basically natural frequency. Uh, you are actually the, uh, like uh, changing the parameter such a way that there is no damping basically. That's what you are doing it, yeah? So basically what you are doing, you, are, you have a PID controller here and you are making all equal to. So either you can have a proportional control like this one or you can say that this is a PID only, but you have tau i equal to infinity and tau and tau d equal to zero, right? You set this value and then you have kp. And what you are going to do? kp you are going to change from zero to infinity yeah change yeah and then you have some disturbance here little little bit of signal yeah maybe as impulse keep on doing that and then uh, you increase from zero to infinity and you see what is the output there will be a time when you get a sustained oscillation something like this yeah that really means you have removed the zeta from the system because of changing this one. That's the, and then whatever the value that results into this one, let's call it k critical. So sustain a oscillation at kp equal to k critical, let us say. And let us say the value of this period means the two peaks. Yeah. So this is the period, let us say call it PCR. Yeah, so based on this, we have K critical and this P critical, based on that, we are going to make a table now, which will be, uh, you can have like type, okay, like earlier, we had P, I, D, then we have P, uh, sorry, uh, proportional first. So uh, proportional, so P, then P I, then P I T. Yeah. And then here the value of, value of what? So we have a controller, the P I D controller. So we are going to put the P I D controller here now, right? So, so P I D control, controller, transfer function is what? which is given, uh, uh, this is kp, 1 plus 1 over uh, tau is plus tau ds. And value, we are going to find out, value of kp, value of tau i, and value of tau d. Yeah. And the values are, if the proportional controller, so of course in that case, uh, tau i has to be infinity and tau d has to be zero and value of this is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 uh, k critical, k critical, okay. Then pi, this value is uh, again uh, for pi then tau d has to be zero, so zero. This one is 0 0.45. 0.45 uh, k critical 
and this is uh, uh, this value is p critical p critical divided by 1.2 okay then this value pid all the three values non zero value has to be there so pid will be 0 0.6 0 0.6 k critical okay then uh, tau i uh, will be 0 0.5 0 0.5 p critical and uh, tau t is 0 0.125 p critical yeah so this is what the the table looks like for the second method of course this method if it is not second order system for example it is not going to work yeah okay or uh, even if it is over damp system it is not going to work critically damp system is not going to work if the plant is like that yeah uh, for uh, yeah for if it is a critically damp then uh, uh, depending on this one this may work actually because if you add when you have a multiplied uh, by that then you have a feedback loop then it can work so i think so it should be like if the second order system it is going to work okay otherwise uh, for a uh, forward system it is not going to work yeah so regardless of what kind of system it has it is uh, if it has this behavior you change kp and you get oscillation meaning that the, you can apply this method otherwise you cannot apply this method and of course this is not the the final uh, values this is a for tuning so this is where you start basically and then you change the values of this un, uh, until you find the the right behavior yeah okay so thus uh, we have uh, two methods the first method is uh, suitable for the uh, plant uh, which is not uh, oscillatory so you give the input a step input and you get a smooth output yeah so and in the second case uh, since this is uh, based on oscillations only so if the plant uh, if you give the the step input and the plant output is oscillatory then the first method is not suitable then you have to do this method then you have uh, a proportional controller here you change that until you get the sustained oscillation and you can find out the parameters okay so so any kind of oscillatory output will actually uh, make method one not applicable similarly in this case uh, what happens is uh, if you have a system and when the, you have a you increase kp but you may not get oscillate oscillation in that case the second method will not work okay so hence uh, we are going to choose uh, whichever is suitable in in few cases both may work okay both of them may work so then we can try both of them whichever it gives you the better result you will do that so we will see some examples <clears throat> okay so let's uh, apply first to a first order system let us see whether uh, if at all we can apply that to a first order system so our plant is uh, let us our plant itself is uh, something like one over uh, say s plus one okay although remember that the the transfer function of the plant was assumed something like this e to power minus s l over t s plus one so this is non-linear basically yeah what you see is a non-linearity here e to power minus s l type thing is there yeah so so uh, so basically here uh, we are not going to uh, uh, basically the may not be able to apply that so but we, we can we can see that whether uh, really uh, uh, that is the case okay so if, uh, if 
if let us say this is my our, our plant yeah, and then uh, what you are going to give uh, input there is output cs like this and you know that if if you are going to give a input like this and the output will be output will be something like this much so there will not be any point of inflection basically so the output of that if you are going to give uh, like this one uh, output will be simply one minus you can check it if you input is uh, ut is equal to one yeah then uh, ct will be in this case will be simply one over e minus e minus t yeah you can take the uh, you can solve that by the the for example, the CS will be 1 over S and then uh, CS, uh, CS will be equal to uh, uh, 1 over S, S plus 1, right? Okay, and then you, you, uh, if you take inverse Laplace of CS is going to give you CT uh, is going to give you simply 1 minus E minus T. Why? Because the this will be uh, L inverse of this S S plus one, which is nothing but L inverse of uh, one over S minus one over S plus one. Yeah, and hence this is the value equal to one minus E minus T. Okay, so what you get is the this one. And hence, if you plot that, uh, plotting that, we will get some value something like this, which goes like this one. And uh, if you go to the negative side, this, this will go like this, right? So actually, there is no point of inflection. There is no point of inflection. So you cannot actually apply that one. But if, if your plant is first order system, you will know, you will know from here, if this is exponential, if you get input, which is unit, and this exponentially is increasing like this one, means if it is falling some kind of one minus e minus t, e to one minus t, then you know that this is first order. So to begin with, this is first order. Hence, you will do the actual analysis to do it. You will not apply. So basically you apply when this is, uh, the plant is nonlinear, for example, that the transfer function may be nonlinear or maybe unknown. It's, uh, neither uh, first order or second order right so in that case uh, you are just trying that so basically what we see the first order if the plant is first order you will not be able to apply this one uh, what about the second method this is the first method we saw right so what is the second method uh, for second method also it's not possible why not possible you can see that so it's a kp here and then you have one over s plus one let us say yeah and then you have like this yeah okay now uh, what we see here does a function ts in this case will be equal to kp uh, simply kp over s plus one divided by one plus kp s plus one right or simply it will be kp divided by uh, s plus one plus kp so what we see here, this is the, again, this, is a, uh, this makes first order system only, and hence there will not be any oscillation. There will not be any oscillation because this is the first order system only. So second method also we cannot apply. Okay, so for first order system, neither this apply nor this can apply. Right. So that also means that since this is first order system, this is already uh, stable. Yeah. Let's look at the simple example and the example we will take now the we have seen that the first order doesn't work so let's look at the second order and the plants uh, uh, let us assume the plants uh, transfer function is a second order uh, critically damped so maybe something like this a s plus one s square yeah so so this is a critically damped 
we know that it's critically damped because it's a repeated root is equal to minus one so and this is here we have yeah this this is the plant and we are uh, now we are going to do the test right so this is one over s plus one s square this is the plant okay so we are going to test test what we will give ut is equal to unit step function equal to what like this and output you are going to measure okay ct equal to one okay so we know that for that the uh, uh, us is going to be one over s and if you uh, you can find out the so this is nothing but uh, cs over us which is found to be like this one now when us is one over s then we can find out cs cs uh, is equal to uh, one over s multiplied by one over s plus one right so cs equal to us times the tps tps is this and us is one over s so like this one let us assume uh, we have to uh, like separate them out and how to do we can write one over s plus b over s plus one plus c over s plus one square yeah and which will make it is equal to a uh, here it will be s plus one square plus b then s s plus one right and then uh, uh, plus c s divided by we'll have s s plus one s square yeah okay now which which will be equal to we can have separate them out so we get a s square to s plus one plus b s square plus s plus c s divided by s s plus one s square is equal to uh, s square term uh, we have uh, a plus b right that's it then we have s term we have 2a from here uh, to, uh, b from here and c is from here so we have s and then uh, constant term is just we have a yeah so divided by s s plus 1 s square if you compare with this one we know that a has to be equal to 1 so we have a equal to 1 okay and then, uh, then we have a plus b equal to zero, right? And this also equal to zero. Two a plus b plus c is also equal to zero. Yeah. Okay. So what do we get? A equal to one. So this tells us that b equal to minus one. Yeah. And. Uh, We also get two uh, two a is two plus b is equal to minus one so minus one here and uh, we want to find out c so equal to zero and hence uh, we get c one plus c equal to zero and hence c equal to minus one okay. So next will be to actually write uh, CS is equal to uh, in this uh, form and we know that A equal to 1 so we have 1 over S plus uh, B and B is minus 1 so we get to 1 minus 1 divided by S plus 1 and then C is also minus 1 so minus uh, 1 over S plus 1 S square okay so uh, in order to know the ct we have to take the inverse laplace transform so uh, inverse cs and which is equal to 1 over s is nothing but 1 this is nothing but e to power minus t this is nothing but t times e to power minus t so this is what our ct is okay okay now uh, what do we have to find out uh, we have to now find out the some value what is the value of t so this is the ct so let's write uh, 
this is ct equal to like this yeah so we have to find out what is t okay and what is l right so that's what experiment we have to do and we have to find out now we have this one and now we have to plot it so that we can find out t and l so if you plot this one this will look like something like this yeah so this will actually it will go like this one this okay so the maximum value the maximum value will be like this one right so if you put uh, t equal to infinity yeah so this is going to uh, decrease fast so this will be zero this will be also zero so you get the value one right so your k in this case what we get k equal to k equal to one so this is the or just we write just the one right but this is the maximum value one. okay so this is t uh, this is t and this is uh, the value of ct actually and this is zero it starts from zero okay now uh, what we have to find out the, this is our uh, point of inflection we have to find out it's right? so a point of inflection how do you find out so first we need to uh, point of inflection will have d square c over dt square equal to zero that's the point of inflection where c is this one okay so we have to find out this point yeah so for that we double differentiate and we can find out make equal to zero find out what is the t and accordingly you can find out that point so uh, then dc over dt is equal to zero minus minus one multiplied by e to the power minus t then uh, we have minus uh, minus and then we have e to the power minus t then plus uh, t then minus 1 e to the power minus t so this is what the uh, differential the derivative of that is uh, which is equal to minus minus plus then becomes e to the power minus t and then uh, this becomes minus e to the power minus t and then minus minus plus and this plus t e to the power minus t so what we get simply is t times uh, e to the power minus t they cancel out so this is what that is okay so d square c over dt square we can find out you can set in this one and we get e to the power minus t plus t and then minus e to the power minus t right and this we have to make equal to zero yeah and that tells us simply that uh, that will make t equal to 1 right so t is equal to 1 is the point where there is a point of inflection so this is this point we know this point is nothing but 1 yeah so this is 1 here okay and what is the value here okay so we can also find out what is the value of here so when uh, we can write here so when uh, t equal to 1 c1 is equal to from here this value 1 minus e to the power minus 1 minus 1 multiplied by e to the power minus 1 what you get 1 minus e to the power minus 1 minus e to the power minus 1 so basically 1 minus 2 over right over e right so this is one this uh, we get this one so this point is uh, 1 minus or simply e minus 2 over e simply e minus 2 over e so this is what this point is this point okay so this point is nothing but you can say 1 comma e to the power minus 2 over e okay now what is the next thing uh, we have found out the point of inflection uh, so we have to uh, actually the we are going to plot the uh, draw the the tangent right so this is what the tangent is and we have to find out a point right why we want to do it because this is going to give us t right from here to here this is the 
uh, t and this will give us l okay now uh, we have to find out this point okay so how to find out that point so uh, we we can also find out what is the slope here at that point what is the slope so when uh, at t equal to 1 dc over dt we can find out the slope right so dc over dt dc over dt is uh, given by tet right so uh, t e to the power minus t uh, t equal to 1 and which will give you e to the power minus 1 which is equal to 1 over e so this is what the slope is the slope is like this yeah okay if, if the slope of slope of this line is this and uh, then we can find out this point so this point will be yeah so let's say the here to here we have l right so uh, so what is the so this one we, we have to find out this one let's say this this is x and this we know already this one is nothing but this we know equal to e the e minus 2 over e from here to here this is the height so uh, the slope we know and uh, so dc over dt is nothing but this slope right so 1 over e should be equal to this divided by this so e minus 2 divided e right divided by x and that gives us a value of x x uh, will be equal to simply x equal to uh, x goes here okay so x over e equal to e minus 2 over e so x o equal to e minus 2 simply so x uh, is equal to this one is e minus 2 right so what is the value of l what we know from here to here what we know is l plus x is equal to 1 right and that gives us l equal to 1 minus x equal to 1 minus uh, e minus 2 right and what do you, what you get you get 3 minus e so simply l this l is equal to 3 minus e which is a positive number right so we got l uh, we got the value of l right and uh, now what remains is value of t yeah so but so uh, the value of t uh, will be this point will be where this uh, this will be t equal to t equal to l plus t because from here to here time is t so basically what we have is from here to here this is time equal to t right like t like this yeah okay so uh, so we can find out that yeah so a uh, tau we can also find uh, find out uh, differently yeah, differently means uh, we can also uh, let us see we know the slope and we know the height so height is this uh, height is 1 yeah so slope is equal to 1 over e is the slope yeah this slope is equal to the, this uh, height which is 1 and uh, from here to here it will be t right and this will give us simply t equal to e yeah. so what do we have we have t equal to e and l equal to 3 minus e there are two values yeah now rest is finding out the the uh, parameters based on the formula we just apply the formula we can find out now let us say you want to just use the proportional control and uh, what it mm, as per the formula as per the rule you can have kp will be equal to simply uh, t over l right and uh, t is e and l is 3 minus e right so this is what the gives you kp obviously this is more than one you can see that yeah, so 3 minus e is uh, around 0 0.3, even less than that. 
and then I have won over that. Yeah, so uh, this will be about uh, uh, more than three basically. Yeah, so this is uh, what the you got you get for the proportional control. So meaning that what uh, based on this one, if you just have proportional, just uh, pro uh, proportional controller. controller and in that case what do you get what it proposes is that you have a, a kp which is e over 3 minus e is the proportional control and then you have that which one uh, 1 over s plus 1 is your the plot and you have the unit feedback loop and uh, you have minus plus Yeah, so this is the first guess. You can have the, like this one. Yeah, uh, you, we can also see whether if you do like this one, what, what changes it makes? Is it a better system or not? So for this system with the, this is KP, right? So you can write KP. So with this system, we can exactly write the equation, the, the, the transfer function, right? So transfer function Ts will be equal to Cs over Rs which is equal to simply uh, Kp divided by uh, S plus 1 S square plus Kp. That's what you get. Right? Okay. Okay. The, um, so here we can see the characteristic equation is like this one. Yeah? Characteristic equation is like this. Uh, and uh, we can now find out the characteristic equation. Equation is s square plus 2s plus 1 plus kp is equal to 0. Yeah, or in this case it becomes s square plus 2s plus uh, 1 plus kp. And uh, here we, uh, kp is equal to uh, is e over 3 minus e. So 1 plus uh, e over 3 minus e is the and this is equal to 0 so we can find out the root now yeah so th this will be equal to s square plus uh, uh, we can check whether what kind of system it is right so uh, what is the zeta basically the s square plus 2 zeta omega n plus omega n square equal to 0 yeah Okay, so here, uh, looking at this one, so what we get, 2 zeta omega n equal to 2, here s yes, we have, 2 zeta omega n is equal to 2, that tells us that zeta omega n equal to 1, and uh, from here we, we have omega n square equal to, equal to, uh, 1 plus e over so this is around 4 basically right and that uh, you can you can see that uh, uh, omega n that tells you uh, omega n is equal to omega n is equal to uh, root right root and uh, this goes here uh, so 3 over 3 minus e basically yeah okay so 3 minus e plus e so that becomes 3 divided by 3 minus e so this is what you get so this is what uh, wn becomes we can guess this value, so this will be simply 3 minus e, uh, let's say this is around 0.3 and uh, 0 0.3 this will be 10, root 10, so around 3 basically. So what we get is W omega n around 3, yeah, and hence you have zeta will be less than 1. So what we get, zeta we get, so zeta equal to 1 over omega n, which will be equal to root 3 minus e over 3 right and uh, which is less than 1 so what it has made this is this made under that 
Okay. So intermediate under dams, that means uh, the uh, earlier the when you applied the just take this system when you applied a, a unit step, what you got was something like this one. Once you have this value here, right? Now if you apply a unit step here, what you get is basically the oscillations now you will get like this one this it will get like here it will go like this one and now this will settle down so it is going to settle down fast earlier it was taking very long to achieve the the final value but here because of the small the zeta yeah and uh, you are getting the values the i mean the uh, you will be reaching the the final value in less time and uh, we have seen that right uh, we know the advantages of uh, the second order system the uh, under damped system because this reaches the the desired value fast so it reaches here and then after that slowly uh, the oscillation dies out and uh, it uh, stays there yeah? so that we know that so th so this is what uh, one of the examples right so accordingly uh, you can also uh, uh, for a pi system also you can find out yeah and for the pid system also you can find out yeah so although here in example we just look for the proportional controller so that we can see that uh, see it but for the PID system also, we can find out the values. We will just find out the value, but not analyze it, okay? So instead of proportional controller, if you had a PI controller, right? So if you had uh, here, what kind of controller? PI controller, meaning that if you have KP and uh, one plus one over tau IS, this system, if you had this one and then you had this the plant which is plus one a square all right and the yeah so if you have like this yeah then you can find out also the the pi's controller the uh, according to uh, according to uh, uh, according to, uh, to the uh, Ziegler uh, Nichols uh, rules, for this uh, the KP value becomes uh, uh, zero point nine uh, T over L, yeah, and and uh, tau I becomes uh, L over uh, zero point three. Okay. So we can find out Kp in that case. So Kp we get 0 0.9 multiplied by T over L. So T is E over L is 3 minus E simply, right? So this is what you get. The, this will be Kp and uh, Ti is nothing but L over 0 0.3 and L is 3 point minus E over 0 0.3. You put that value here and this will give you approximate value where this will be suitable. Similarly, PID we can also find out. So according to the uh, formula for PID controller, so if instead of this, yeah, if we had one more term here, uh, and this term, we also have TD tau DS, here. right okay so this is now PID so if you had this now then you will get the according to, uh, according to Ziegler Nichols uh, rules we can have KP will be equal to 1.2 T over L yeah and then you have Okay, KP is like this one, then tau i, 
Now i is uh, uh, 2 to l and uh, tau d is equal to 0 0.5 l. And accordingly, we can get the value. So 1.2 uh, T over L. So E is equal to E multiplied by E divided by 3 minus E. Okay. And equal to 2 L. So L is equal to is 2 3 minus E value. And this is 0 0.5 3 minus E. So you have designed the PID system. This is PI system. So instead of PID, if you prefer PI, you can have this value. Or if you want just the proportional controller, you just have this value. So this is how you designed. You have this is how you designed for a, uh, a given plant. But remember that here we knew the plant. You know, so we could have used uh, the usual method, you know, root locus method or uh, Nike's testability criteria or body plots just looking at that we could have just seen and uh, we could have designed that but here also uh, this uh, the idea of this example was if the plant was a bl black box we did not know although we assume this one but we assume this uh, say uh, just uh, to uh, just simulate one plant basically so unknown plant which uh, actually it looks like this one and we gave some input there was output and based on that we actually finally everything was decided based on the output only okay so we did not look at how it looks like just output based on the uh, how the output was uh, the response uh, what the response was to the unit step input and based on that we decided Now let's look at the second method, okay? We want to know if we are able to apply the second method here or not. So uh, for that, we need to have a, the feedback loop uh, that we have to construct first. So this is the KP here. And then we have the plant, which is one over S plus one S square. Yeah. And after that, we have feedback loop unit feedback and we have like this yeah so the we have minus here plus here and like this okay so here what do we get uh, the closed loop the closed loop transfer function will be equal to kp divided by s plus one square one plus kp is plus one is square and simply this will be equal to kp over s plus one s square over kp okay now what we want to check is whether it's possible to get a sustained oscillation is it possible to get so for that we have to know the characteristic equation and the uh, characteristic equation is uh, is s plus one s square plus kp is equal to zero that tells us is square plus 2s plus 1 plus kp equal to 0 and uh, from that we know that s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square equal to 0 and hence from here we know that zeta omega n is equal to 1 and which uh, gives us zeta equal to 1 over omega n and omega n square is equal to 1 plus kp and that tells us that omega n is equal to root 1 over kp okay so so uh, zeta that really means uh, what we get from here is zeta is equal to uh, 1 over omega n equal, equal to 1 over root 1 over kp which is if, if you have a kp equal to 0 then zeta equal to 1 so which is less than equal to 1 basically yeah so if we, so zeta is less than 1 if kp greater than 
zero. Yeah. So that means uh, the KP can make system this system uh, uh, under depth. Right. So this means under depth. Under depth. But what we want is undamped system for sustained oscillation okay so that really means zeta equal to zero so zeta equal to zero is possible can we make zeta equal to zero yes if zeta tends to zero if kp tends to infinity so there is no finite value of kp which is going to make this system as purely undamped system yeah and since you know that uh, in the second method all the parameters like kp and uh, ti and td are based on kp yeah so uh, i mean the, the critical so that really means k critical k critical is equal to infinity in this case if the all the values parameters are based on k critical and k critical is infinity here that really means that we cannot really apply the second method to this kind of plant if the plant is given like this yeah so uh, why because we get k critical, k critical equal to infinity in that case that's why you cannot do it so we have to uh, let's uh, take another uh, example uh, which we where we can apply the second method now let's look uh, um, uh, find out if we can at all apply the method to to a second order system so second order system uh, maybe our plant looks like uh, it is uh, in general it is like uh, one over so, some value let's say call a over uh, something like b s square and s square plus uh, b s plus c something like this one okay so th this is our the the plant is something like and then what we are going to do, uh, we have to have a proportional controller KP that we are going to uh, change and see whether we are going to get oscillation or not. Okay, so here minus plus, okay, like this one. Okay, so the, the tensor function Ts in that case will be what? Will be equal to simply A over A S square plus B S plus C plus kp like that now what do we see we want to make it the cartesian equation is this yeah so s square plus bs plus c plus kp and what we want sustained oscillation means zeta equal to zero zeta equal to zero only when b equal to zero only if only if b equal to zero if b is not equal to zero you cannot get zeta equal to zero so actually if b is positive you cannot get that okay so now b not equal to zero then not possible simply not possible right so zeta equal to zero not possible now let's say call it b equal to zero if you put b equal to zero then the s you get characteristic equation will be s square plus c plus kp right and uh, it it will oscillate for sure but for any value of kp right so sustained oscillation sustained oscillation for any value of any value of kp any value of kp why because this is what you get you get one over s square plus c plus kp and c plus kp will be s square plus omega n square right where omega n square will be c plus kp or omega n equal to root c plus kp so 
if k p equal to zero, then also it's fine. If uh, k p is a big number, in this case we assume c is equal to negative number, right? Uh, positive number. If c is negative, then it will work. Otherwise, it will not. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So. So basically, uh, what we see in this case as, uh, for any value of kp and hence it will not work. If, of course, we, here we are assuming that uh, b equal greater than zero, c equal greater than zero. If it is not like this, if c is if c is negative, then it will work. Then we will get uh, 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 like. Uh, no, in that case also it will not work. Yeah, as long because in that case b is not equal to zero. See, in any case, what we see here, the second order system, second method, not suitable for suitable for first order system, first order uh, plant, and second order plant. Both, for both of them, it is not working basically. Yeah. Okay, so we have to uh, find out other example. Let's look at the example of a plant which has transfer function as S, S plus 1, and S plus 2. Yeah. So this is a transfer function. So this is third order system. And this is CS a unit here we have KP this and here plus minus and RS this system okay now the Transfer function, the closed loop transfer function is given by simply this is equal to uh, kp divided by s s plus 1 s plus 2 plus kp. So this is the transfer function. So characteristic equation is characteristic equation becomes s s plus 1 times s plus 2 plus kp equal to 0 right? or simply we get uh, s cube plus 3 s square plus 2s plus kp is equal to 0 yeah and then we can find out the value Okay, so we can also estimate the value uh, where we are going to get the oscillation and how we can apply the Routh's stability criteria. Uh, so we can have a skew, then uh, Routh stability criterion, a skew, then s square, s1 and s0, a skew is 1, s square is 3, a skew uh, then here we have 2, 2, and we have kp. So we have here 6 minus kp divided by 3. Here we have 0, and here we have kp. Yeah. So looking at this one, 1 is greater than 0, 3 greater than 0. This has to be for stability for marginal st stability we can let's call Le for marginal stability we have to have this one kp is greater than zero right okay kp has to be greater than zero so uh, so what we get for my marginal stability six minus kp three over three is equal to 0 and that gives us kp equal to 6 and that's, that really means kp equal to 6 makes the makes the closed loop system 
क्लोज लूप सिस्टम अंदेंथ दैट इज जेटा इक्वल टू जीरो ऑल द रूट्स आर ऑन द ऑन द मिलिटरी एक्सिस दैट्स व्हाट टेल्स राइट ओके सो दैट रियली मींस वी कैन फाइंड आउट द केपी इक्वल टू सिक्स इज द वैल्यू वेयर uh we are going to make uh, like this so then we can find out what is the omega right so okay so kp equal to we get a s q plus 3 a s square plus 2 a s plus and kp is equal to 6 equal to 0 and so we put a s equal to i omega so that we can find i omega n yeah so i is equal to i omega n, omega n means uh, it is on the on the image the solution is on the imagine imaginary axis and uh, that that also means if it is on the imaginary axis that means zeta equal to 0 right so you put the value here and what do we get we get minus i omega n cube plus not plus but minus minus omega n square Uh, 3 of course plus 2j omega n plus 6 equal to 0 and what do we get we have uh, two of them 2 okay so this is uh, i basically yeah okay so we can have i and then uh 2 omega n minus omega n cube plus 6 minus 3 omega n square is equal to 0 or what do we have we have uh, we can write like this so we have uh, i then omega n 2 minus omega n square plus 3 and then we have 2 minus omega n square equal to 0 or simply we have 3 plus i omega n multiplied by 2 minus omega n square equal to 0 or what we get we get simply omega n square equal to 2 and that makes it omega n equal to root 2 so at omega n equal to root 2 i mean the kp equal to 6 means uh, well, uh, omega n equal to root 2 so this is going to give us the natural frequency for the sustained oscillation okay so 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 that really means from here we can find out the uh the parameters so so far what we got we got kp equal to 6 so so basically k critical is equal to 6 yeah so that we have got the value of kp which gives sustained oscillation is k critical which is equal to 6 we got that now the the p critical so p critical is nothing but the time period what is tells you the time period so this is the p critical yeah is a time period so 2 pi over p critical is equal to omega n which is equal to in this case root 2 yeah and hence p critical will be equal to 2 pi over root 2 or simply root 2 pi yeah so we have p critical equal to root 2 pi okay now we can choose our values whatever you want right so not whatever but the according to the the uh, ziegler the nichols rules we can apply now so if now if we are just designing a proportional controller then we can have uh, according uh, to the second method of the of the uh, ziegler nichols rules uh, we will have kp 
so if the proportional controller proportional controller if you are designing then kp is equal to k critical over 2 or 0 0.5 times k critical so that makes it 6 over 2 equal to 3 we will have that okay if you want to design the pi controller then uh, value of kp is 0 0.45 k critical and uh, in that case we have 0 0.45 multiplied by 6 and okay? whatever value we have and the value of uh, the tau i is given by p critical divided by 1.2 and p critical is equal to root 2 over multiplied by pi divided by so that's what we get okay similarly if you want the PID controller so in this case uh, KP is 0 0.6 times K critical K critical and then uh, what we have is 0 0.6 times 6 so 3.6 basically and then tau i will be 0 0.5 p critical so p critical is uh, so we get uh, 0 0.5 multiplied by root 2 pi uh, root 2 pi yeah. okay and then uh, tau d is given by 0 0.125 p critical will be 0 0.125 P critical is root 2 and 5. So th this is how the parameters will look like for the PID controller. Uh, this is for just proportional controller. This is for PI controller. Okay, so for PI controller, you know that tau d will be equal to 0. Uh, for this one, for proportional controller, you know that tau i will be infinity and tau d will be equal to 0 yeah and uh, for PID controller so this value so this is how you design it okay you can design for for uh, wherever applicable for uh, some system uh, uh, you don't know how, uh, what the transfer function it has so you can uh, give some input, measure the output based on that, you can design that. Okay, so this is also applicable to a nonlinear uh, transfer function that a plant can have. Yeah, so this is a very powerful method basically. And of course, as I said earlier, these are not the, uh, these values are not the one which uh, will give you the exactly what you desired you will have to fine tune and that's why this chapter is about the tuning basically yeah so this is the, the uh, ziegler nichols uh, rules are for uh, tuning the pid system okay so you have to complete some iterations to achieve the desired uh, design features okay so that is all for today uh, I would like to add that uh, we have completed the book of the control systems and uh, completed the course actually. Okay, so we have finished the course. So uh, we have two more video lectures remaining, but uh, those will be about the quizzes, the quiz solutions. Yeah. So quiz uh, two solutions I will give. Uh, uh, in the next uh, lecture video and uh, and next to next one will be uh, solution of the quiz 3 which is which is going to be held next week okay